because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. Welcome everyone. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, this is uh actually I think you said last time that our last show was our tenth episode and this is our eleventh. I'm like losing track, but yeah, it just feels really cool that now our show is is playing out weekly. And yeah, we just it's like somehow because our shows now are each week it's accelerating like even kind of our healing and the things we're becoming aware of and yeah it's just kind of stepped up the game for us which is good it's like we're just here to share about our insights and experiences of our uh of you know our journey as i like to kind of say our process of it all and yeah i think um when we were praying together it was kind of like you know every week it's like okay reveal let's reveal what the theme is of this show. And I uh, thought it was going to be apathy this week. Uh, maybe some other themes too. Maybe sex again, maybe, um, maybe rage, maybe some, some other themes. Yeah, as we just well. go wherever the spirit takes us. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Who knows really? <laughs> just no. Um, yeah. I don't know. We were just joining before the show and I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like, like disconnected right now. And mm. I, I went and, I joined with Jason and I feel better but when I was joining with Jason it almost felt like, like there was some emotion like somewhere there like it's almost like something wants to come through on the show that I was like scared of or something so let's just pray that whatever that is <laughs> it's revealed yeah I don't completely know myself but I had some thoughts of different sections that felt inspiring well actually one of the sections you you were saying you do this. Uh, yeah, this what do you morning. Call it? Well, <laughs> well, I was just having fun because I, I do this every so often, just when inspired. But um, yeah, with with our book, A Course in Miracles, I when I first went through it, I actually just read it totally linearly. It was like I was all about like being very structured, you know, because that was the only way. I didn't I didn't feel like I had any intuitive feelings, so I was like, well. If that comes in, I'm sure it'll like come in later, but I just got to work with where I'm at. So I used to read it all linearly. And then since then, I'd heard about David Hoffmeister and how he actually read it, which was, he called it like using it as an I Ching or something, where he would just kind of have a prayer in mind or a question in mind. And then he would just flip open the book or he would hear like a page to open to. And every single time it's been a, a total like gift, like the answer to that prayer in the moment or that question. And and so since then, I've been experimenting more with it myself. And this morning, when, or yeah, this morning when we came to connect about our show, I just, you know, I had the book and you had left the room for a little bit. And I was like, yeah, I just, I, I heard the words like, Father, give us our daily bread. Like, what would you have me hear today? Like, like what would you have me speak on today for our show? And, and I just opened it up and... I didn't actually see the the section title until later, but it just felt perfect. Just some of the just some of the lines that we had looked at together, and I think the title was like the gifts of fatherhood. Yeah. <laughs> and we even had this question like, does, does this mean like we're gonna like <laughs> what is this you know interpreting the signs and symbols? It's, you know, there's no need to do that. <laughs> Do you feel to read that or maybe I Yeah, maybe actually you read a bit? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. This is good stuff. So this is chapter eleven, God or the Ego, and this is the first section um called The Gifts of Fatherhood. <laughs> and um this is paragraph nine, so it says, 
The projection of the ego makes it appear as if God's will is outside yourself and therefore not yours. In this interpretation, it seems possible for God's will and yours to conflict. God then may seem to demand of you what you do not want to give and thus deprive you of what you want. Would God, who wants only your will, be capable of this? Your will is his life, which he has given to you. Even in time, you cannot live apart from him. Sleep is not death. And when I read that, I kind of think like sleep is not something that's, um, that's not irreversible. Mm. Did I say that right? That, yeah, I'm doing the double negative stuff, <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> sleep is irreversible. Yeah, there we go. Really okay. That's what I hear when I read that. And uh, then it says, what he created can sleep, but cannot die. Immortality is his will for his son and his son's will for himself. And then um, I'm just going to skip to the next paragraph. It says, you cannot be happy unless you do what you will truly. And you cannot change this because it is immutable. It is immutable by God's will and yours, for otherwise his will would not be extended. You are afraid to know God's will because you believe it is not yours. This belief is your whole sickness and your whole fear. Every symptom of sickness and fear arises here because this is the belief that makes you want not to know. Believing this, you hide in darkness, denying that the light is in you. You are asked to trust the Holy Spirit only because he speaks for you. <laughs> that was the line I read this morning. It's like, ah, oh, like, yeah. It's so simple. And it was <laughs> yeah. like, He's trying to help you out. Man. <laughs> Just listen, because he's, he's on your side. Yeah. He's on your team. You yeah. Know? Yeah, that just really struck me, that, that simple part. Yeah. And um, maybe a few more lines. Yeah. And then it says, he is the voice for God, but never forget that God did not will to be alone. He shares his will with you. He does not thrust it upon you. Always remember that what he gives, he keeps so that nothing he gives can contradict him. You who share his life must share it to know it, for sharing is knowing. Blessed are you who learn that to hear the will of your Father is to know your own. And for it is your will to be like him, whose will it is that it be so. God's will is that his son be one and united with him in his oneness. That is why healing is the beginning of the recognition that your will is his. Hmm. Yeah, and we were talking a little bit like we might like to do a little more of um, pausing and praying as we like to ca call it like on the show, you know, like, yeah. Like every now and then, you know, we might just go into like a short meditation and you guys can join us. It's a really great opportunity to let everything sink in and really feel the presence. So, mm. so yeah, I just wanted to give that. Yeah, no, that's great. Because, <sighs> yeah, I just felt like it was so great because this past, this past uh, week, I actually... Um, I went to our monastery out in the canyons, and it was to it was to help prep for um, the mystery school that was about to begin. It was our Tabula Rasa annual mystery school, and yeah, normally you know we were we'd be here all week and we'd be connecting and stuff like that, and it just wasn't kind of flowing because I was full on with the support up there, and. And so, so great that I, I came back last night and, and I just wanted to like kind of share like our, our process for even getting ready for the show. It seems, uh, you know, we were just kind of laughing about that last night is, all right, we come together, we share a week's worth of healing and then we're set. It's like, we're both kind of aware of what's been going on for us. And, 
and that's really our our prep just sharing all the healing and insights we've had this week and and last night as we were <laughs> in our, uh connecting at our usual spot that we've been doing these facebook lives um under the tree outside yeah we were just kind of sharing all our insights and you just shared some powerful parables that you've had this week and experiences and and i was just sharing with you again this feeling of like because i felt like you with one of your experiences you actually saw the like you it's like you lifted up the whole carpet i felt you had like an experience of kind of getting underneath the whole pattern uh that was coming up for you and i was sharing that i actually i don't know that i've had an experience with that at least with that similar pattern but that for me yeah whenever i have kind of this discomfort come up um I just, yeah, what, whatever the discomfort is, but lately just with uh, maybe any sense of lack or specialness or feeling like I'm desiring something that's not actually uh, presently like available or given or, you know, just right here. And, and I was just telling you that, yeah, it's like I've been having even like a different experience with it where I've lately, where I can see my mind start to, maybe wander or get kind of stuck. And yet there's been a shift, especially in this past week where I could just see that. And yet I would then have this thought of like, you know, if I just face this, this too shall pass. You know, if I just really look at it and I'm with it, if I just allow the discomfort to be that I'm not going to die from the discomfort, it's just going to be uncomfortable. So I, if I'm just with that fear or that lack or whatever, if I just face it, like with those nightmares, if I just turn around and face it, then it just kind of moves through or I can see kind of the deeper layers of it. And it's just been this real cool switch I've been having this past week where I've just been more willing, like I'd, I'd hear that thought and then I would just kind of feel the willingness actually to just be with it. All right, I'm just going to be with it. You know. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? <laughs> like, you know, like enough of being afraid of being with it, you know, of of not looking at the fear. So that was that was pretty powerful for me this week. I just, you know, especially at night. Uh, the other night I had some like, there was actually this intense feeling that came up for me. And I could see the initial interpretations where mm -hmm. I actually, you know, I was having like this bursting love that was in my heart towards someone. And. And initially, immediately I had these thoughts like, I, like, I think I'm supposed to like, you know, tell them like, does this mean a relationship? Okay. You know, I had all these kind of thoughts that came in and, and yet, you know, my prayer beneath everything is like, make it obvious. And, and I wanted to just face it. Cause actually, even when I have like, uh, like, you know, it could be like a sexual urge or, or a strong energy, you know, we were just saying, we don't even, you know, we've been labeling it's sexual urges or whatever and yet we don't actually know what it is you know we've just been labeling and so if i'm just so i just decided to really be with it that night and it's like it was my first experience in a while where i just i just stayed with it and i didn't really try to draw any conclusions and it just passed and i was like oh actually no it's not this you know not that there's anything wrong with the love but my interpretations of what it needed to be or potentially look like all these scenarios, it was like for 20 minutes, I was just really with it because it was, it was pretty strong, the feeling. And then just, just passed and I felt again at peace. Yeah, it's like we talked about last show, you know, like God's always calling and then it comes through in all these different ways that seem distorted and whatever it might be, like a sexual urge or, or I'm hungry or, or whatever you think you want. But it's really just God calling and I... Yesterday I was, um, yeah, it's scary. It's funny how miracles, it's... yeah. So yeah, I just want to share this miracle, but I was, uh, we had this meeting yesterday. We we're just talking about this new platform we're thinking of using. And, uh, I was trying something out where, you know, for me, there seems to be this loop where this thing that happens where a lot of energy will build up and, you know, seems to get distorted. So I'll call it like sexual or whatever. And then it's like, okay, 
now it's like built up all the way has to be released right like whether it's sex masturbation whatever it has to be released because it seems to be uh some kind of ego urge i mean that's what the ego thinks right so then um yeah i was, I was just sitting in this meeting and i uh yeah the energy was really strong and i i was like i'm like extremely horny that's what i that's what i was thinking so i so i started thinking about sex and i was like and then i started thinking about okay um what is it that i really want actually <sighs> yeah it's just it just feels deep cuz i remember last show i talked about you know the world is just a reflection of your mind you're always experiencing what you really want to desire in any moment there's no situation where you're ever experiencing something that's not your desire it's literally not possible so i was yeah i was sitting in that meeting and i you know the that energy came and then i was thinking about sex and I, then i then i thought so what is it that i really want and then yeah and i just thought wow it's like so hard to say <laughs> wow yeah it was just Well, I was just thinking even in terms of logically so if the world's a reflection of my mind and I'm not having sex then <laughs> yeah I don't know it's like it's scary to even get to that realization again but mm. I think first I'll say the first thought I had was okay Hold on, just give me a second. I don't know if I say I'm going to say. Yeah, so I would uh I would get stuck in this thing where it's like, okay. First I would blame it on God. I'd be like, okay, you're not giving me the means to release this energy you're not giving me the answer to my problem and i don't i would define the problem as like that i need to have sex and then it's not showing up so now i'll have to masturbate to like release this energy tension feeling and then and so that would be like this rage story the victimization like so addicted to that feeling of like yeah it's your fault i messed up i'm lacking i'm deprived whatever i'm fucked up and it's your fault that you're not giving me the solution and then all of a sudden i really i just yeah i just thought okay so what is it that i really want and then i thought do i want to masturbate and i thought no i don't okay that leaves that up and then i thought okay i want to have sex and then I, I saw on the screen that I wasn't having sex. So that's a clear conflict <laughs> with the basic law of the world's a reflection of my mind and I'm always experiencing my desire. So so when I saw that I was like, "Oh wow." So so I must not really want this actually 
because if I did really want to be having sex, I would be having sex right now. And if I did really want to be masturbating, I would be masturbating right now. So it's like, what do I really want? And then, <laughs> now I'm laughing at this point, but yeah, I just can't even, it was absolutely like inexplicable. It was like, I don't know. I just felt like I, I touched God or something. And, uh, and <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's funny how it was just so scary for me to say that. Cause I, I'm so used to like who knows how many years or lifetimes or whatever that I used some kind of victim story to say um, God's not giving me what I need, mm. but actually the truth is like He is, and I'm actually I'm scared to actually fully realize that. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I just want to read the section from. <laughs> I didn't want to mention I, that. The way yeah, you had right. actually also described that experience, because you were sharing with me last night, like, wow, that has got to be shared on the show. Like, that just felt really huge because you're like, <laughs> the way you described it was, I, I was like in the father's house or something. I don't know. It felt really like, it's like you don't talk that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just is incredible to hear you say that. I just wanted to mention that because I kept hearing, like, you said you're. Like you touched on like the father's house. <laughs> so yeah. So. Yeah, so <clears throat> so yeah. I just wanted to read this section, this paragraph from uh Fear and Conflict from chapter two in the course, because it feels very um relevant to what I was just saying. And it's paragraph five, it says fear is always a sign of strain. And what's fear, right? Fear is anything that's not love. So rage, anger, victimization, literally anything that's not love is fear. So fear is always a sign of strain. Arising whenever what you want conflicts with what you do. This situation arises in two ways. First, you can choose to do conflicting things, either simultaneously or successively. This produces conflicted behavior which is intolerable to you because the part of the mind that wants to do something else is outraged. Second, you can behave as you think you should, but without entirely wanting to do so. This produces consistent behavior, but entails great strain. In both cases, the mind and the behavior are out of accord, resulting in a situation in which you are doing what you do not wholly want to do. This arouses a sense of coercion that usually produces rage and projection is likely to follow. Whenever there is fear, it is because you have not made up your mind. Your mind is therefore split and your behavior inevitably becomes erratic. Correcting at the behavioral level can shift the error from the first to the second type, but will not obliterate the fear. Yeah, so. Yeah, there we go. Whenever there's fear, it is because you have not made up your mind. Your mind is therefore split. It's almost like at the surface level, you have that filter where the light comes through and it gets distorted. And then, and then you think that you want all those distortions. But really, you just haven't made up your mind. Hmm. It's like you haven't actually looked at everything in your mind to really see like what's going on because if you do then you might actually make up your mind and see what you really want mm. and that's that's the healing of the split mind when you, when you see what you really want like holy like like totally but unified desire it's like a complete convincing job of the holy spirit yeah. And then when there's no split in the mind, then there's no fear. And then there's no separation. Because separation literally, you know, means split. Mm. So. 
There was um because you just said that that's something about separation. Where was the oh we're several chapters away. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not for now, but but yeah, there was just a line that was saying Yeah, I'm gonna paraphrase because I don't have the line right in front of me, but it was just saying like if God if it's Jesus being it's like if I and the Father are with you and like you are with us and we're in infinity, like how can you be alone like if you're a part of that? Like there's and I don't know, that really kind of touched on something because I've always been really that theme of brotherhood has always been so dear to me. And I know in some movies recently, just every time that's touched upon, I end up like, I just really start crying because just that willingness to go like above and beyond with your brother in the healing, you know, to really go for it is, it's like, there's nothing more precious than mighty companions. Like, yeah, and Jason always likes to say, like, um, your mighty companions can see things in your own mind that you're not going to see yourself. Because, you know, it's like, it's almost like some kind of, the ego is just this box or a loop in the mind. So it's like, it just keeps staring at itself, but it's like stuck in this box. Mm. So it's like when you're kind of in the ego mind, you can't see outside of it and you have to kind of go beyond it to, in order to see the solution. But then your mighty companion, your brother, can see things in your mind that um that might be helpful for you that you can't see because you're still like you know you're in that little mm. box you're in that loop mm. so that's one way that where it can be really helpful that's why the holy spirit can speak through your brother mm. yeah yeah or like you know with our show intro it's like you literally are your brother it's like as we keep clearing those blocks away like with us like we've talked about in other shows but we keep coming together, exposing these private thoughts or anything that basically blocks us from feeling a connection. And one of those being even the friendship concept, like we keep washing that, like what is a friend, but they even talked about that recently in some sort of, um, I forget where I just, but quite recently that was just brought up again. And it's like friendship is this contract, you know, in the way the world kind of uses it. And, and mighty companions, I would say, a, a, a I, I like using that word, but what that means is basically like a true friend, a friend that is not there for you in reciprocity, is there for you for your total healing, is there always kind of looking out for your greatest good, which doesn't mean it's going to fall into your preferences. <laughs> they're going to hold you into true empathy, always. You know, they're going to call you out on your bullshit, <laughs> which is good. We need that. We need, you know, I love it when I told Andy something. Ah, like the details of it are missing, but you just called me out on it. And I was like, ah, oh, well, thank you. I didn't like that, but thank you. Like, yeah. I need that. Yeah. I need help. And you know, we're, you know, going all the way. Yeah. We me. need our brother. You cannot go home without your brother. And yeah. So thank you guys so much. I know this episode might have been a little more of a sat song, <laughs> uh, but thank you for joining us. Thank you. And see you next week on Modern Mystics. See you next week. Yeah. Or actually not next week. Hold up. I will just quickly correct that because next weekend is the the Into the Mystic online retreat, which, you know, kind of fits with our shows and everything. But um, So we'll see you actually in two weeks, the weekend yeah. after next. But we hope to see you on the online retreat. Yeah. All right. See you soon.